everybody. I am here with Craig from uh, Howdy. Uh, of Udro. Um, we thought that this would be an amazing video to talk about what the operations of you know doing a remote observatory would be like. So uh, I'm not the star of the show today. It's Craig. <laughs> so uh, I think a good thing to do is to lead us into the building. Welcome to Utah Desert Remote Observatories. This is our family business. So come on along, let me show you the observatory. Come on in, this is the office and this is my family. Like I said, it's a family operation. I'll start with our son, Christopher here. Chris is the uh, equipment operator, construction, electrical, uh, takes care of all of the kind of the, the grounds and buildings. Introduce you quickly to the rest of my family. This is my wife, Debbie. Hello. So if you're a customer here and you're getting invoices, she's the one that's sending you the invoices each month. Yep, keep track and of who's where. Keeps track of who's where and the bills and paying bills and mm -hmm. so forth. And our daughter and son-in-law, this is our daughter, Cassie, and son-in-law, Steve. Uh, Cassie is the one, if you look at our Discord channel, She's the one who around you know, four or five, a couple hours before sunset every day, uh, updates the Discord channel with the weather outlook for the night, whether they're going to be open, closed, clear, cloudy. Steve is really the lead telescope technician. If you have a problem with something, uh, focuser stops working or whatever, um, mount needs adjusted, worm gear needs lubricated, he's the one who does that. So the office serves as a warm room, uh, but also is a place to work if we're assembling telescopes, focusers, that sort of thing. Uh, customers generally have things that get left with their telescopes, spare cables, lens caps, that sort of thing. So each customer has a tote here on the shelf where they can store those various items that might go along with the telescope. Other than that, it's a basic office. We have the computer center, we have a restroom, a lot of storage. Uh, this is really kind of the, the nerve center, I guess. So a frequently asked question people might have for remote observatories is, what happens if it rains overnight? Well, and that is a concern. Fortunately, we have a weather system. I can show you on the computer how that works, and then we'll go outside and actually look at the weather system. The weather page on our website is really a wealth of information for our customers and for what's going on around the observatory. We have a good assortment of information with satellite views, clear sky forecast, uh, you know, just various weather forecast systems. But the weather system report in the center really gives you current, up-to-date information of what's happening at the observatory. That weather system is also integrated with our roof control system. So the computer and the roof system always know what the weather is. If it's clear, cloudy, rainy, snowy, sunny, uh, that's how it can make informed, intelligent decisions about whether the roof should be open or closed. So behind me you can see the weather system. It has an anemometer that records the wind speed. It has sensors on top that record the brightness to know if it's day or night. It records the moisture, so if a drop of water hits it, it'll instantly tell the roof system that there's water and it will know that then it needs to close. Uh, it also has a sky sensor. Uh, it works through an infrared thermometer that's pointed straight up at the sky and the sky temperature is what tells us whether it's cloudy or clear because clear skies are colder than a cloudy sky. So in layman's terms, when it detects anything, the roof will close. If it detects anything, the roof will close. A drop of water will instantly close the roof. Generally, it'll get cloudy before it rains. So as it starts getting cloudy, that'll trigger the roof to close. And that counts for snow, rain, anything that falls out of the sky. Yep. So we talked about rain, but what happens if a windstorm happens? Well, that's always a concern. Uh, first of all, the weather system will pick up high winds. So if the wind picks up, it'll close the buildings. But that's not our only concern. We also want to make sure that if the buildings are closed and the wind picks up, they stay closed. And to ensure that, we actually have locks on each one of the buildings. Uh, you can see we've got a camera where we can visualize each lock. So right now, this is the uh, Primrose West building, and you can see that it's unlocked. 
and when I trigger the lock remotely, that will tell the lock to engage. Now that building is locked and there's no way it can come open. And then once we're ready to open for the night, we just tell it to unlock and we're back in business. Something that you wouldn't necessarily think of, we always want to make sure if we open an observatory, we always want to make sure we can close it. And one of the things that could be a concern is getting snow or ice or frost on the track. So we actually have heat trace running through the track. So yes, we have heated tracks on the observatory. So if it does get snow or ice or anything on it, it'll melt right off. So from a customer point of view, how do you really know if you're able to image tonight? So I watch the weather every day for several hours um, ahead of time. And each one of our customers is invited to our Discord, Utah Desert Remote Observatories. And we will put out a Discord each evening that will give our time of opening and kind of what our plan for the night is, what our forecast for the night is. Each person that signs up for our Discord will get their own notification, so you're not having to check weather all day. You can just wait for your notification and you'll know if we're gonna be open for the night. I think a common concern that people might have with remote observatories is what happens if the power goes out? That's a good question too, and we are concerned about it. Fortunately, we don't really have a lot of concerns because we have a real good power uh, company out here. I think in the last couple of years, we've only had one power outage and that was a planned maintenance outage that we knew about in advance. If there is an unplanned outage, uh, all of the telescopes, we always advise our customers to install a small uninterruptible power supply. That only needs to keep you running for about 30 seconds at the most because each observatory also has its own automatic backup generator. So if the power does go out, the standby generator will automatically turn on. As soon as it comes up to speed, the automatic transfer switch will switch power over to the generator and everything will just keep running as if nothing ever happened. Amazing. So it's backup on backup on backup. Backup on backup on backup. And I do have a little monitor over here. If the power goes off, it lets me know. So I'll get an email and a text notification right away. Excellent. A lot of measures in place. Yep. There's a lot to it. So we talked about how what happens when the power goes out, but what about the backup power? How good is it? Well, it's actually really good. This one's going to be enough to want run our new observatory plus a third observatory in the future if we do decide to build another one. But this will handle everything that is needed to run all the scopes at any time. And it also kicks in in less than 30 seconds from power out. Step. With the 500 gallon propane tank, we can pretty much run indefinitely or as long as we need to, to get power restored. This is the generator. Propane tank is right over there. It's about 500 gallons. That'll run for weeks and weeks. So I'm panicking. I don't know, I, I need to fix something on my telescope. Uh, what happens if I have an issue immediately? Well, not a problem. You get on our website, go to contact, submit a support request, and we will get the message uh, by email. And we look at this every morning and throughout the day. And so you just fill it out, tell us your issue, and we will get it addressed as soon as possible. And that's usually how we start our mornings out. We look at the tickets and, and just kind of plan our day out from then. So if something's not connecting, you need a cable change or something, then we'll, we have cables on site and we'll take care of you. Steve is overly modest. There's almost nothing that he can't take care of, and he has proven that over the last year here. Uh, we had an example recently where a customer's scope, just the mount just quit responding. Uh, Steve was able to disassemble it. He diagnosed it as being a faulty control card. We had a replacement card on site that we could use to get him back up and running. The customer thought he was going to have to pack up his mount, you know, ship us a box, have us pack it, ship it to the manufacturer to get that fixed. We were able to get him back up and running within a week because we had the parts here and Steve had the knowledge and skill to take care of it. So it may, if someone is dumb enough to come steal something, are there safety measures in place? There are safety measures in place. First of all, we have lots of cameras. In fact, we have three different kinds or three different networks of cameras uh, with motion activated notifications 
uh, at the entrance and elsewhere. So if somebody comes on site, we know somebody's coming on site. Uh, the buildings are always locked so somebody can't get in. Uh, we've got caretakers on site and our caretaker's a pretty good shot. So, you know, and he's within easy rifle shot of the observatories uh, and their dog is not all that social. So you, you want to think twice before coming out here unannounced. Sounds like bad news. Sounds like bad news. So as you can probably tell, I've got probably the best job in the world. It's certainly the best job I've ever had. Uh, I tell the kids that their jobs are a bit like being a lighthouse keeper because they're on site, they're here in case something goes wrong, but they also walk through the observatory every day to make sure that there's nothing out of line or out of position or making an odd noise. Our goal is to provide the best customer service in the industry. You know, everybody has a roof that opens and a weather system and cameras. What we have is good customer service and a good family-oriented business. We really have two businesses that we provide here. The main one, of course, is the peer rental for remote telescopes. We do also have a couple of telescopes where we offer hourly rentals. If you have a special target that you're wanting to go after or if you want to experiment with narrow band uh, monochrome cameras, for instance, it's a good way to try that out without making a big investment yourself. Uh, you just pay for the imaging time and we help you through the process process and make sure you get good data to work from. So if you'd like to reach out to us through our website, uh, through the contact form, or through the email at info at utahdesertremote.com, as you can see, we have some space available now in the second observatory, and we'd love to talk to you about hosting your telescope under our dark sky. Bye! We hope you liked this video and enjoyed learning how a remote observatory actually works behind the scenes. We've been imaging there for more than a year now, and it has been a complete life changer. We've had several issues with our rig, and each time, the problem was fixed in hours or sometimes minutes after submitting a ticket. So this shows how UDRO really does everything to have the best customer service in the industry. So we'll see you guys next time, and clear skies.